You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Win with Dogs is brought to you by Dog.com. For everything and anything dog, shop Dog.com today for all the top brands. Greenies, Frontline, Kong, Nylabone, Royal Canin, and more. Shop at Dog.com and use the promo code SADWIN, S-A-D-W-Y-N-N, and get $15 off your order of $75 or more. Got questions about your hound's health? Need the facts on Fido's fitness or food? You want to unleash your pup's potential? Well, you've come to the right place because it's time to win with dogs. Here, we learn how easy it is to naturally improve the lives of our furry friends. So sit, stay, and get ready to win with dogs. With me, Raquel Wynn. Welcome back, listeners, to Win With Dogs here on Pet Life Radio. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm super excited about my next guest, Nancy Stanley. She is an author and also recognized as one of the modern-day animal therapy pioneers, which is so close to my heart. I cannot wait to introduce you to her wonderful book, Pillow with a Heartbeat. It's about a tiny, tiny chocolate poodle named Truffles who finds his purpose in life, which is dog therapy. Please don't go away. We will be right back after this short word from our sponsors. Hey, don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back to Win With Dogs right after this quick water break. and the best care. So when you ask us a question like, So how do you feel about cat condos? We can say from experience, Feels like home. For her. Enter the code WIN10, W-Y-N-N, the number 10, and get 10% off any order. No minimum at Petco.com. There's a movement afoot. Shoebuy.com. Join the millions of people who shop ShoeBuy.com's over 400 brands and 500,000 products. Order now and get free shipping and free return shipping. ShoeBuy.com, the world's greatest shoe store. Walk your dog in style and comfort. Enter the code WIN, W-Y-N-N, at checkout and get a 10% discount plus free shipping at ShoeBuy.com. How would you like your business to reach out and invite in our audience? We have a brand new trademark concept called Info Seeds. Info Seeds are short 20 second seeds of information about your place of business, practice, or service. We only have a limited number of slots left. For more information, visit PetLifeRadio.com. Click on sponsorship information. There you can listen to a sample of Info Seed or email us at PetLifeRadio.com. Remember, only a limited number of opportunities are available. Hi, this is Marcy Davis and my service dog, Whistle, and we're your hosts of Working Like Dogs on Pet Life Radio. Working Like Dogs is the show where you can learn everything you ever wanted to know about working animals or working dogs. Whether you're a member of a working dog team or you've just seen a working dog or animal out at the mall or the grocery store and you're curious about how these amazing animals work with their human partners, then Working Like Dogs is the show for you. Join us for the inside scoop at Working Like Dogs on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Thanks for hanging around. We're back to Win With Dogs with me, Raquel Wynn, on Pet Life Radio. Welcome back, welcome back. I hope you're all settled in and ready to listen as we welcome Nancy Stanley to the program. Hello, Nancy. Thanks for joining me today. Hi. I'm very, very happy to be here. Thank you. You're welcome. Nancy, you have done so much for animals. I'm thrilled to have you on my show. I know one of your great passions by reading about you is animal therapy. 
And that's fabulous, fabulous. I want to talk specifically today about that and also about your new book, Pillow with a Heartbeat, which all of you all listening should get this. One thing that I love about this book, Nancy, is that it is written from Truffle's perspective, which I know all of us animal lovers and owners and parents love to think about what our dogs are exactly thinking at any given moment. And I tell you, this short little book brought me to tears <laughs> and joy, tears of joy and everything. So thank you so much for writing it. Tell our listeners a little bit about the story. Well, first of all, I was inspired. I'm a wish granter for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And the, the little girl that I had, well, she was 16, inspired me not only to write the book, but just in my life altogether because her zest for life was just unbelievable. I, I just couldn't believe going through what she's been going through for treating leukemia that she had such a, an incredible outlook on life. And, one day, and her bond with truffles was so fantastic. And she actually understood what he was talking about. I'm and she sure. Goes, Can you imagine she if he, yeah, she was in tune, just like we are all in tune to our dogs. Mm -hmm. But this was special. And she said, if Truffle could just talk, could you imagine what this dog would be saying? And, I, and this, this bulb went off in my head. And I went, I think I'm going to write a book and he's going to talk. I never wrote a book before. But it was so easy because it's easy to talk to Truffle. And he has so much yeah. to say. And so Truffle's... I love the story of you getting truffles and him <laughs> meeting you for the first time and then you left and then you came back. <laughs> so when you got this little guy, this little guy was quite tiny, tiny little, tiny truffle. Less, yeah, he was less than two pounds. Oh, and he only that's... weighs two pounds now and he's six years old. But it was a, it was a, it's exactly how he was feeling because I went to I went to meet him and – and I wanted him, but I had to go away for two weeks, and I couldn't take him home and then put him in a boarding or anything like that. So, so the so the woman kept him for me, and I just was so sick. The whole my vacation was ruined because I was <laughs> this dog loved me for an hour on the floor, and then I left him. And how could Poor I be that? Way? But as soon as I saw him, it was he actually remembered me. I'm and it sure. Was beautiful. And and so it just developed. This whole story developed, you know, from. From that moment on, before I even knew I was going to write the book. Yeah, and, and you know, I have two rescue dogs also. And one thing that struck me, well, I've had many in my life, but I have two currently. And one of the things that struck me in this book was Truffle's desire to catch on to and fit into your life. And that's one of the things that I love about dogs is that they try to bond and fit in. And the whole therapy dog thing that Truffles was so great at it, it was almost like Truffles knew that that's what his purpose was because that's what your purpose was. Right. He did. And from the minute that he crawled into my lap while the other dogs were playing, all these puppies were so cute. And he didn't want to play with them. He wanted to come to me. And that's the first sign of a great therapy dog is that they're not a dog dog. They're a people dog. He crawled on my lap with a great struggle to get up on my lap because he was so teeny. And he yeah. just looked at me like, thank you. Can you please take me home and put his head down and fell asleep? I mean, it oh, was a lot of people that I know have thought that their dogs would be great at therapy in the therapy dog role, what should we look for if we are interested in doing that with our animals, with our dogs? Well, the you are a pioneer of therapy dogs. <laughs> I, I want to know what you think. <laughs> Let me pick your brain. Okay, well, the, I think the most important characteristic of, of being a therapy dog is their temperament. That's, that's mm -hmm. like the biggest thing to me. I know they train, they, they get these dogs certified and they go through all these tests and throwing down heavy things and heavy machines next to them so they don't freak out and all that stuff. But my, my personal opinion is that it's just their temperament. Um, they have to be just friendly and patient and gentle and confident and, and at ease at all different situations. And mm -hmm. the most, and other most important thing is they have to enjoy human contact and be content to be petted and handled and, and even if they're handled clumsily sometimes, they have to just flow, go with the flow because they're just yeah. the way they are. They're so benign, and Truffles is exactly like that. 
I have to see, you roll him on his back, he's not too happy, but he will put up with it. I just don't let people do that because you, you know your dog and you have to watch for you, watch out for your dog first and foremost that you protect yeah. your animal. And um, his job is just to, to allow people who are not familiar to him to make some kind of physical contact and enjoy that contact. And children in particular, they enjoy hugging animals and adults usually enjoy just petting them. But kids want to play with them and hug them and squeeze them and, and boy, Truffles loves that. As soon as, <laughs> I, as, soon as I, no kidding, I, I pick up his therapy dog jacket, he takes a beeline three flights downstairs and sits by the door because he knows oh. he's going to go have fun. Yeah, and it's interesting when, if you've ever done any work with that, and I have experienced it myself when the animal and the human make that connection. And it truly is like, I imagine Truffles just holding a radiant space of love and energy and understanding and unconditional love for this person. And it's almost like Truffles is saying, and I'm reading this book going, the whole time Truffles is going, I understand. I understand you. I am here for you. I understand you. I would love to hear some stories of Truffles therapy experiences, a couple you know, particularly moving moments for you <laughs> when you knew it was worthwhile, all of this. Well, when I first realized it was worthwhile was when I first started in 82. That's how long ago I started this uh, this program, Tender Loving With Zoo. With Tender Loving Zoo. Yeah, that's great. Uh, the first, the first uh, school that I went to, I went to on my own with my dog Freeway. That was the, that's when I knew I was on the right, the, this mission was just something I had to do forever, as long as I could. There, the children in this particular center were all, and I mean all, 100% of them were never going to get any better than they were. They were going to grow older if they, if they lived to grow older, and they would always have to have 100% care. They were laying on mattresses, you know, and having therapy and meds and all this stuff. Well, when... When I first came in, there were there were a bunch of you know how little children if they're if they have like cerebral palsy and then other complications and their bones are rigid and their fingers are all tight and you know gnawed up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when they put their hands on my dog Freeway, who was just as cute as Truffles and soft and black, not chocolate, their hands relaxed. All of this gnarled up. The hard rigid yep. rigidness went away, and the, the attendants were freaking out. They could not believe this was happening with all their therapy and massaging, and nothing yep. would do that. When they touched and the I, dog and they felt the warmth and the love, and I, and I they, think that's so amazing. That's so true. I I have to take this path for a minute with you because a lot of the work I do is energy work, and I think dogs are natural energy healers. And a lot of um, human pain conditions and disease, as you're saying, it totally affects the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems of the body. And nothing right. else can calm that except energy, calming energy. And it's almost like animals and your dog Freeway and Truffle know how to radiate the proper frequency to calm a human down. And it's truly amazing when you see, like you're saying, someone who, no matter what therapy they do, their muscles won't relax. They cannot get to that calm space in their body. And I think... Yeah, and also, if I may, I think it's also because they are so in the moment with this animal that their brain stops working over time. Thinking about yep. all the stuff there that's making them stressed and making them sick and making their blood pressure high. They don't think about it. They think about this moment. And once they can let go in their brain, it just yeah. becomes a physical thing with them. And that, that's so true because I often say to people, my perspective is that your brain is over your body, but your spirit is over all of those and being in the moment and connecting with an animal and an unconditional love that is truly a spirit connection where you are not this you are not bound by your what your brain tells you or what your body tells you you're connected completely spirit and i assume you are completely connected with all your animals and you have noticed this and that's why you've been doing so much work with it your whole life is 
you know, the spirit connection of an animal. And honestly, I think so. and, I, and I also know for a fact, because you know how children come from broken homes, which I did, and I was very, very sensitive, and I bottled everything up inside, and, and my dog was the only being on this earth that I could talk to and mm-hmm. get all these feelings out. And uh, I think I became a really good, non-druggy kind of person because of my animals, because I let everything go, and I, nothing was inside anymore. I could just talk to them. And, yeah, and, and I think that's, that's what happens with most of the people that I see. They get so in tune to truffles that they start talking to me about everything that was ever bothering them or how lonely they were, and they lost their dog and and especially the elderly. I mean, that's just mind blowing to see what I see when I'm with these old people. And yeah, we're all going to have parents or grandparents that are going to be in these situations where they're in these places where they need to have this extra love and attention. And it is, I think it's the best for them, the best. Yeah. And it translates to, you know, health benefits. That interaction translates to low, like you mentioned, lower blood pressure you know, slower heart rates, slower respiratory rates, all of these things are affected just by being in the presence of a dog, which is, or an animal, or a horse for that matter. I know you do a lot of work with horse rescue as right. well. You know, this, we're here talking about truffles, but I would love to hear just a little bit about your equine welfare and rescue that you do because that is so important. Horses actually are where I learned my energy work with animals. I worked on polo horses and fox hunting horses. And you talk about completely in tune energetically. Horses (laughs) are extremely sensitive to this, to uh, energies of humans and their surroundings. So you're doing a lot of work with equine rescue currently. Right. I've read. And the reason why I'm doing that is because most of the people in this whole entire United States don't know that the horses are being butchered and tortured for meat, for mm-hmm. horse meat, to go to Europe for a delicacy. And they're taking all of our horses, all of our thoroughbreds that, that ran for all their owners, and then they're supposed to be going out to pasture somewhere to live out the rest of their lives after making them hundreds of thousands of dollars and these kill buyers come and get them and they put them on these trucks for 18 hours all together. The stallions and the mares and the babies and they're all shoved into these trailers and by the time they get to Mexico or Canada, half of them are dead or injured and then they, they slaughter them without any anesthesia, nothing. They just hang them up and slaughter them. And I mean, and documentation the, on all of that. So yeah. So, so this woman, Katya Louise, did a film. She's been working on it for two years called Saving America's Horses, A Nation Betrayed. Yes. And it's, it's going to be premiered on March 27th in Los Angeles. Disturbing, disturbing to say the least. But even more than that, I think, and I'm sure you would agree with me, that just the state of our society and our perspective and where we're at, enlightenment, whatever word you want to use, I mean, how we treat our animals is tantamount to how we end up treating ourselves, I think, and just the blatant disregard for life and, you know, the cruelty which we throw at it is something that has to be brought to light, I think. As, as difficult as it is to watch, it totally does. Let me take a short break and pause for our sponsors and we'll be right back and continue chatting with Nancy Stanley. Don't go away. Hey, don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back to Win With Dogs right after this quick water break. Love your pets but wish their medications were a lot less expensive? They are at 1-800-PET-MEDS. You'll not only save on flea and heartworm medications, but on prescriptions for arthritis, incontinence, thyroid, and more. And you get fast service, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Plus, our licensed pharmacists ensure accuracy, monitor drug interaction, and more. See why over 5 million people have trusted their pet's health to 1-800-PET-MEDS, America's largest pet pharmacy. Call now or order online. Go to PetMeds.com forward slash win, W-Y-N-N, to get 10% off any order and free shipping on orders of $39 or more at PetMeds.com. 
STD's network of over 40,000 florists around the world have been creating beautiful handcrafted arrangements for 100 years. Each arrangement is delivered the same day and backed by FTD's seven-day satisfaction guarantee. For a century, people have trusted their most important occasions to the flower experts at FTD. Since Pet Life Radio is all about puppy dogs and flowers, our listeners, that's you, can get a 20% discount on your order. Go to florop.com and use the code WIN1234 at checkout. F-L-E-U-R-O-P.com, code word W-Y-N-N-1234. How would you like your business to reach out and invite in our audience? We have a brand new trademark concept called Info Seeds. Info Seeds are short 20 second seeds of information about your place of business, practice, or service is the best, most cost effective way to invite us in. We only have a limited number of slots left. For more information, visit the website PetLifeRadio.com. Click on sponsorship information. There you can listen to a sample of Info Seed. Remember, only a limited number of opportunities. Opportunities are available. Stop what you're doing and start horsing around. Every week on Pet Life Radio, horse expert and award winning rider Audrey Pavia will be trotting out great tips on feeding, breeding, and more on everything equestrian. So set a spell and say hey to Audrey and get ready for a darn tootin' gallopin' good time. Every week on Horsing Around, on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Thanks for hanging around. We're back to Win With Dogs with me, Raquel Wynn, on Pet Life Radio. We are back with Nancy Stanley, pioneer of animal therapy and author of her first awesome book, Pillow With A Heartbeat, if you want to find out more about it, you can go to pillowwithaheartbeat.com or you can find some links on Pet Life Radio on our site. Thank you, Nancy, for staying with me too. And we were talking about just treating our animals in such a way that we as a society can be proud (laughs) and what that would say to us. And I think animal therapy, we have so much to learn from our animals. And, you know, you have touched on something with the animal therapy movement that I think in the future will be extremely, hopefully used more as we search for ways to be healthy and try to take our health, you know, take accountability for our health. And um, your book of truffles and his purpose being found, I thank you, thank you, thank you for writing it. I also would love to hear about, on a personal level, truffles, I know in the world he's done tons of therapy and help, but personally, I'm sure he is changed your life and filled your life so much as my dog that inspired me to write my book. How was he your little inspiration? (laughs) How did he become that big master dog in your life? (laughs) Well, you know, I'm a New Yorker (laughs) to start off. We have this kind of personality where kind of hard a little bit, you know, and right out Uh there. I mean, we're honest, but we're right out there. And truffles, In my book, there's a saying I have in my book, and to me, I use it all the time. Be the kind of person your dog thinks you already are. Yeah. Because our dogs think, now, even if you're not the best owner in the world, your dog loves you, thinks you are perfect, and there's no, you get an A plus no matter what you do. Well, that's the way we should be acting. We should be acting the way they think we are. Because if we do that, we won't have wars, and we won't have people being mean to people, and we won't have bullies in school bullying the children. And this is how I, ever since I got him, and Freeway, but more Truffles. Truffles is more exceptional than any dog I've ever had. He taught me to always think before I I talk. You know, say something kind at least once a day to somebody. He makes my life just so much better, and he and he brings people around me. He attracts people around me who are worth being in my life. Mm-hmm. And he helped me dismiss people who were not worth being in my life. Nancy, your little truffles helped you be the person you could be. I love that. And I was saying that truffles is probably like a member of the family. I know there are a lot of dog behavioralists who kind of say, you know, take the alpha role and 
don't let the dog lay in bed with you and all that. That's not how things go in my household. Is it how they are in yours? <laughs> no, truffles, first of all, it's just me and truffles right now. My kids are out of the house and, and it's just us. But truffles has trained me to be a perfect owner. Yeah, that's right. You're paying attention. And, you know, I 93% of human communication and animal communication is nonverbal. Exactly. And that, that blows my mind because most of us, are just chatter, 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 not aware, not aware, not aware. And honestly, you know, you were saying, you know, that having a dog as a member of the family actually is helpful to you as your growth as a human. It saved me. It it has saved me. And I am now from this age on feeling really, really good about mostly everything, which is most people don't get to that point, unfortunately. Yes. Well, not all of us can be saved. <laughs> we can all strive, but we can't all be yeah. saved. Yeah. So how often do you volunteer with Truffles? What is his day? Do you do Make-A-Wish Foundation? Do you do... I go to the senior centers about um, once or twice a month, if I can. And I do the Make-A-Wish. Well, I have a little boy that I'm going to be meeting, I hope, next week. But I try to do that every three months because it takes about that long to get it all together, meet the child, interview them, find out what they want, get the wish put together, and then go do some enhancement parties for them. So that takes about two, I'd say two months. And then we wait for another, I wait for another list and see if I pick somebody, at least in my area, because some of them are really far from me. So it makes yeah. it difficult, you know, with everything else I'm trying to do. And since I, I market my own book and self-publish, it's really difficult to do everything all day long every day. Right. But, but I, do how, enough, I do enough. I mean, I how do, do How enough. do we, if I want to volunteer, are there sites I can go to online to like look for people specifically or organizations specifically looking for that? I mean, if I wanted to do that, how do I even begin? No, actually, when you get your dog certified, everybody who lives anywhere has a center in their community, like a home for the, the elderly or residential area, uh-huh. you know? And you can just call the administrators, look up their names, call the administrators and say, hey, look, I have this fabulous dog and I'd love to come and, and, you know, spread some love and licks over there. Yeah. And um, they're happy to have you as long as you're certified and your dog is clean. And, I mean, there are things that you have to do to have your dog go there, like be totally well-groomed and have your inoculations, but that's all done with the certification. Right. Just look, go through the yellow pages, go on Google, type in um, senior centers, you know, ho- convalescent homes for the elderly, children's centers, maybe Boys and Girls Club. That yeah. Are, or these places I've gone to before for um, battered women. That was fabulous. And I've been to, the, to, to one of those places down here. Um, which I won't say because it's kind of hidden, but that's where all the children go who are abused and yeah. they're taken away from their families while their parents are in treatment. And that was just mind-blowing. Yeah, so I there bet. Are many different places you can go, and you just have to do a little research online. And, I mean, I assume, you know, you have gone through incredible transformation and gotten completely intimately connected to, like you said, people who are not going to get any better. And one part of the book... I was particularly moved by was you talk about your friend's daughter, Olivia, who had leukemia and had her head shaved. And you yourself decided to not only bring a dog that would look at her without any kind of shame and unconditional love, who would only give her unconditional love, but you connected by shaving your own head. (laughs) You, you. Let me stop you there. That's one of the very few parts of the book that aren't true. I personally didn't shave my head, but I'll tell you why I put that in. It's because when I, the day I met this family, they opened the door to me and Truffles, and there were seven people standing in front of me with bald heads. Oh, how cool. It was the coolest thing I ever saw, and I knew right then and there I was in trouble because I don't get connected to the family. <laughs> That's I what I was going to say. I was going to say. I was going to say. the boys that I have. I, was I knew, I said, oh boy, this is just what I said to them. I am in trouble. I love this family. Yes. And for a whole year, I'm still very good friends with them. Yeah. But um, I saw their bald heads, and, and I had met Michelle. Her name's Michelle Butler, but she wanted to be Olivia in the book. So, uh-huh. so I met Olivia, 
And we connected like she was my daughter and my sister all together. And she took one look at Truffles and picked him up, and that was it. That was it for me. I mean, Truffles was in her arms, melting into her body. And when she said to me, Nancy, if Truffles could just talk to me, can you imagine? And that's when I decided, oh, what a great idea. I'm going to write a book. And Truffles yeah. is going to Yeah. That's, I think that's great that you don't get intimately connected. I, as an energy worker and such, um, I work very hard. And I think this is an important point for anyone listening that is interested in doing this kind of therapy work and getting involved with people is to kind of keep your autonomy and, you know, you can only, you can help better if you are not connected and you are more objective. You can be connected energetically, but you don't carry that weight of anyone else. Yeah, because it, I do get moved and sometimes I get back in my car and I shed a few tears, you know, like, oh, I wish this child didn't have to go through this because then I relate to my, I mean, I think about my own children and God forbid that anything happened to them. And I, you know, that's what, that's where Truffles comes in to my life. He keeps me calm. Mm -hmm. He makes everything okay. It's not going to happen to me. And I'm going to just take care of those that it happens to. But with Michelle, it was different because I couldn't help it. She yeah. was the most inspirational girl I've ever met. Her whole family, the way her love for life, this whole thing, it just, it just made me want to be, want her in my life because I wanted to learn from her. Yeah. And, and which I, I did. I read my book, but no, I will not get involved with anyone else like that. I mean, I did have to quit for three months doing more. Maybe it was five months after she passed away. I was a, a basket case. And a lot of people don't even understand, you know, we, like we were saying before, we go through life and aren't really paying attention to some of the internal, spiritual, energetic things going on in our life. And you experienced a process of what I would call energetic unwinding after that, right. that lasted five months. And that's okay. But, you know, for anyone who is interested in helping do not shame yourself or beat yourself up if you, you know, feel like you have no energy after working with someone or that is completely normal because I think with a therapy dog and what you're doing and what I'm doing, we're trying to connect on an energetic level, not just a chatter level. And right. that is what really changes, changes the world truly changes the world. And that's where animals come in. I'm kind of jumping across the board talking about the horses again, but I just, I want to make sure everyone hears that the show Saving America's Horses is airing this month in LA. And is there a website that we can go to if we want to try to encourage its release on a more national level? Yeah, go to the website. It's uh, www.savingamericashorses.org. And, and it'll have all the information on there about this premiere. This is just a premiere. We're hoping that, that after people see this, we can distribute it so it becomes in every theater. We, it's just, you know, you never know. But it's, it's a fantastic beginning to let people aware how important horses are in this world and that they think they don't, they're not like other cows. And I mean, I feel terrible for the cows and all that too. I'm not a meat eater, but. Me neither. I, know. <laughs> I can't after working with animals so closely. I can't. Oh, I can't. <laughs> and, but horses aren't, are different. They're intelligent. And they do feel, like you said, they, they know what people are thinking. I mean, they are the best animal-assisted therapy pets. And they have a place here in Helen Woodward where they have a therapy program all the time with the horses. And it's an amazing, amazing thing. Down syndrome kids that go yep. regularly. And it's just amazing how this horse understands them and they, the kids learn from them. I think you know, that's they learn so, to brush them and they learn, they yeah. get this connection just from, from that kind of, you know, handling them. I just think it's fantastic. I think it is fantastic. And I also think this is kind of indicative of like what's going on in our society. I know a lot of friends who have had children that are talking a lot later, like three, four years are not talking. They're not talking right. and that's right. okay. And I'm saying to them, you know, of course, all the doctors are like, oh, no, we got to get them in therapy and this and that. But I say, look at all of the stuff that they are ingesting, all of the radio waves and what's in the ether right now is way more to be absorbed than even 10 years ago 
for a child. So it's no big deal. That's where animals come in is that we can relate energetically. And I think that resonates with any human child or adult. You know, it resonates when you make this connection and are actually interacting on a level that I think we are intended to interact on that we never do. That's why right. it's so powerful. So I really appreciate all the work you've done all these years, you know, bringing this to the forefront. We use horses for uh, psychotherapy, yeah. therapy, and the, all this therapeutic riding. It, it's, um, it teaches riding skills to a person that has disabilities. And while, even though it's not legally a therapy, or they can't yeah. say it's real therapy, this activity has profound and multiple benefits for the people. So who cares what you call it? You know. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, it, it totally. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> Hello. Who cares? It's, Hello. It's, it's, it's the cheapest psychotherapy I could ever have. I couldn't afford a psychiatrist, and this is cheap therapy. Yeah, and it's fabulous. It's fabulous. And it works. And yeah. it works. And along the lines of you not eating meat, just it's funny because I often say to my husband, "Oh." I can't. I work so much with animals. And he says to me, it's not about the cute factor. It's about digestibility. <laughs> so whatever motivation you need to maybe look at eating less animals, all you listeners out there, check into it. Because I think for the earth itself, it is going to be quite hard to feed all of our voracious meat-eating appetites. But that's another Another whole topic in itself. Well, I don't know. I've been <laughs> off meat, chicken and meat, and I just I do eat fish, even though they are pretty cute sometimes. I eat, I, fi- I I eat kind of, fish too. I eat fish I'm too. I'm guilty now about eating fish, but I just can't give up everything. I mean, I just well, you know I I, I hear you. But I might at some point. I, I was to death. I mean, I I, 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 eat. I was actually a vegetarian, full fledged for four years, and started eating fish again two years ago, and I do feel you know, a little bit more alert, I would have to say. But I struggle with it, too, because what's the difference? You know, yeah. I don't know. What's the difference? It's still a living, a living thing. I don't know. That's a whole nother topic. But I thank you so much. We're out of time. And I loved talking about your book and all the animal therapy. Pillowwithaheartbeat.com is the website. Buy a book. Let's get this good mojo going in the universe. We love that. Yeah, and go to Amazon. They have it on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. You can order it also. Perfect. Perfect. And I'm on Kindle. Okay. <laughs> and on Kindle. Awesome. I love it. I hope my book's on Kindle. I don't know. <laughs> I have to check. What is your book? My book is called Stretch Your Dog Healthy. It's a therapy book on stretching and energy and like holistic health for dogs. Which oh, I, I want it. <laughs> yeah, I'll send you one for sure. Well, <laughs> and any yeah, one of mine. <laughs> I know. It's fair is fair. Fair is fair. Well, um, I would love to read that. It's a very brilliant title. And, and Truffle stretches all the time, so I guess he's already healthy. Yeah. Yes, exactly. My intention was to just have people spend a little time hands-on, giving back to their dog, staying very in touch, good. you know, monitoring health. Touching, touching, touching. You know, I have a lot of people that say, oh, you could touch a dog's tail or a dog after knee surgery. We haven't touched that knee forever. It's like that's what heals it. Touch, touch his knee, knee, you know. So anyway, but thank you so much, Nancy. And listeners, I hope you enjoyed. What a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. And we will stay in touch. And thank you for another exciting episode of Win With Dogs. Exercise, nutrition, interaction, and love make for one healthy, happy hound. Give yourself the gift of knowledge on demand every week right here at Pet Life Radio with me, Raquel Wynn, and Win with Dogs.